Green contingent at City Hall, Assembly members Jenny Jones and Darren Johnson, is standing down. So it's up to Sean Berry to convince Londoners that the Green Party hasn't lost its momentum. And Sean Berry joins me now in the studio. Sean, let's talk about housing, first of all, because it's such a big issue. You want to build 200,000 homes by 2020. That surely means building on the green belt. It, it does not, no. We have lots of public land that we can use. Uh, we must keep the principle of brownfield land first, town centres first, um, for as long as we possibly can. What I've said is the next London plan should not relax the uh, protections for the green belt or much pollution open land. After that, when we've, when we've built 200,000 new homes, we may be short of space and we'll have to think very hard about whether we do encroach on the green belt or whether we jump over it and start with some new towns and things like that but for the next 15 years I think we're okay. Right you can sort of guarantee that you want to prioritise brownfield sites so does everybody the point is they're not always appropriate and some of them as we know are highly toxic. Shelter says that most of the brownfield land already has houses on it so you'd have to look at it before 15 years time in terms of green belt planning. No I don't agree I think there's a lot you can get um, from also um, um, building on top of the homes that we already have. You can do some very creative things with infill. We have an awful lot of car parks in London, which we're not going to be needing in the future because we're going to be driving less. We're going to have better public transport, cheaper public transport under the Green Party. So I think we are OK for this for the next 15 years. And I think relaxing the uh, protections too soon would just lead to Greenfield being used first, and that would be wrong. You said in your manifesto that about half of the 200,000 homes you want to build will be affordable but you don't provide a definition. So, in a sense, it's meaningless. What is affordable for the Greens? Ah, no, we do provide a definition. Um, oh, tell us. Yeah, no, well, Caroline Lucas tried to put uh, an amendment into the uh, Housing and Planning Bill recently. We need to define a living rent right. um, in, in a quite sophisticated way. We need to look at it at a London level. At the moment, we're paying around about uh, half our average salaries are going on the average rent across London. But what's and the that's figure? Far too and high. is it in your manifesto? People, well, people believe that it's around about 30 or 35 percent is affordable. But I think we need to look into that for London because other living costs are very high, including right. Shouldn't things like that have transport. been in your manifesto? Because people will want to know. It I, gives a sense of certainty. No, I think we need to do a study properly to work it out. I right. think jumping ahead, just shouting out a number isn't the right answer. So it's here. not there. I mean, when you say you have got an affordable <laughs> figure you haven't actually got one as yet no we want I mean the same way as we calculate the living wage and the Greens uh, I mean Tony Travers in that video is talking about how we don't do deals we do do deals we won the living wage unit out of Ken Livingston um, and the living wage unit does that for London it calculates a different calculation for the living wage for Londoners because we have higher living costs and I think just saying 35 percent it might be too low it might be too high and we do need to look into that properly get some proper economists onto the onto the deal there. but that will obviously have an impact on the number of affordable homes you can build, depending on what those figures are. Yeah, and we're talking quite radically about changing the market in housing, actually. I mean, what we need to do is, you know, we can't just keep begging the big developers for more affordable homes because they're very good at getting out of that. Boris and Ken have been trying that for 16 years and getting nowhere. We do and need you a think you can market. do a lot better? Yeah, we need to, we need to ditch the, the model that we've got at the moment and build the alternative, which means using the public land that we have, making sure that we work with smaller developers, people who want to build their own homes, cooperatives, housing associations, associations and councils and build a secondary market where people are buying maybe the bricks and mortar but not the overheated land prices that we have in London. I think that's a model that could really work and get affordable homes to buy and affordable homes to rent on that land that we have. All right, let's talk about transport um, because in the film uh, it talked about introducing a new one ticket to allow people to change between modes of transport without paying again. How much will that cost? We think we've, we've spoken to Transport for London about this because all my fare plans have been fully costed up. Um, they estimate that adding a bus journey to every tube journey, which is a good way of making that estimate, uh, would cost around about two or three hundred million pounds uh, a year in in the budget. Right. How would um, you pay for that? Well, uh, overall, um, including the plan to flatten the fares, bring down the fares in outer London to central London, we think about ten percent of the fares budget, uh, the fares income, would be lost that way. And we propose to get that back by increasing the costs uh, for driving in the city. And I think that's only fair at the moment. So it's very speculative, payers, though, isn't it? But well, no, we we, we can. Bring in a new congestion charge uh, that, okay. that is smarter and covers the whole city. And it's only fair. At the moment, fare payers contribute 40% of Transport for London's budget. Car drivers only 2.5% through the current very small congestion charge. And but the other issue we have to deal with is air pollution. And so I think the congestion charge that covers all of London needs to be combined with an ultra-low emission zone. And that way you make up the money that you, you lose in fares. And I think that's the right way to go. People who take public transport are doing the right thing. They shouldn't be paying all of Transport for London's but budget. But you would be leaving TfL Transport for London 
London with a quarter of a billion black hole, in essence, and just hoping that more people will use the transport network, fewer people in their well, cars? Well, no, because, I mean, our fares policies were coming gradually and we'd bring in the congestion charge in the low emission zone over a couple of years using lots of consultation and so if anything went wrong in that process then we could we could change them there won't be any black holes and we're really really committed to investing more in public transport and walking and cycling and sorting out our town centres and we don't want that money to be in jeopardy right i mean you want to close down city airport you talked about air pollution what do you say to the 2000 people who work at city airport well, I think there's a real opportunity with City Airport once Crossrail opens and people can get to Heathrow more easily to shift the flights there and that would shift the jobs as well um, and that would free up 500,000 square metres of space and the, the vision you could have for that amount of space in London, I mean you're talking about the lack of brownfield land, you've got an airport's worth there, we could build a new quarter for the city, homes and businesses and people in that area are blighted by noise and air pollution, it would make a real difference to their lives too. Let's talk about the long term goals as listed on the Green Party website and whether you support them all because not all of them were in your manifesto I mean do you support the idea of a zero growth or even negative growth economy in the long run and I think in London what we're inevitably going to grow in London because our population is increasing so right. much so that's so not a desirable the economy of you. London needs to increase but I think we need to build a more resilient economy later today I'm going to be launching my plans for a bank for London one that's going to help small businesses to grow be a space for people to ethically save as well so that more of Londoners money stays in the local economy doesn't fly off to tax havens and, and all that kind of thing I think we do need to be building a different kind of economy but there are plenty of jobs in a green economy what about security and crime the mayor of London oversees the Metropolitan Police and one of the policies on the Green Party's website says it should not be a crime simply to belong to an organization or have sympathy with its aims so should being, being a member of ISIS or Al-Qaeda not be a criminal offence? I think, I think being a member of organisations that are committed to violent terrorism is something that should be uh, illegal. But that's not because what it says when on When it comes website. to policing in London, we need to be working with communities. We want to rewrite the, uh, the, the police's priorities, working with communities to work on what actually is effective against extremism. And I think we've got problems at the moment with certain aspects of policing, certain aspects of surveillance, also the prevent strategy, and we could be doing things far better. All right, what do you make then of the front page story? Story today that Sadiq Khan, Labour's candidate for mayor, shared a platform with a man convicted of terrorism in 2003. Serious concerns? These attacks keep on coming against Sadiq and uh, they all seem to centre on occasions when acting as a local MP or as a human rights lawyer. He's been uh, doing things like, I think this, the attack today is about a conference that was about the treatment of prisoners in Guantanamo Bay and we know there was injustice there and it's about due process and, and things like that and I think these attacks, I think they're coming from the Conservative campaign. I don't think they're respectful to London. They're seeking right. to divide us, and I think that's not the campaign we want to see in London. Sean Berry, thank you.